Shakalaka, what's up homies? We're back with interview with Kazaklu Bay. Let's go. Oh! I destroyed them, twisted them apart, tore them to pieces and squeezed them dry. Then absorbed their life until they were all dried up. Like, some, that's something very Bay-like. If I had anything that be, could be called a fighting style, that was the best description for it. I trampled my enemies with all my might, leaving them as little more than undignified gore. I knew pretty damn well that I was being crude and brutish. I mean, by that point, I had a general idea how people viewed things. What of it though? Sure, I didn't give a sh you know what about society's standards, but I wasn't purposefully, uh, purposefully trying to stray away from them either. If anything, it just so happened that my style fit a certain template. It definitely wasn't like I was just some little brat trying to look cool by doing bad things. It was just a matter of what I preferred and what I was good at. Yeah, you're pretty damn good at being disgusting. That's what you're good at, sir. Going wild simply felt right to me and I couldn't do things any other way. It was something that had become a part of me. During the nights I spent hunting cats and dogs and babies and drinking blood and all that jazz, being a very disgusting creature that I am. Wilhelm Edinburgh. I believed it was normal for people to be good at what they like doing, and the reverse was as verse as well. I was good at fighting using my style, and it gave me the best results, so I naturally came to enjoy it. Yo, what what? <laughs> Alright, so what Poor fool is actually shooting at you right now. Yeah, you're definitely gonna have to use something better than a gun too, because that ain't that ain't gonna work. I never held back and wasn't ever planning on it. My nature was that of a taker. But didn't you hold back against Shido? Cause you kind of enjoyed it or something? So I guess that was a... Uh, that was an anomaly there. Vampires were hunter who did nothing but plunder, drinking blood at, for as long as their hunger willed it. What? You're using your Beria? What the hell is wrong with you? Thus, I wasn't restraining myself this time either. Friend or foe, it didn't matter to me. I simply had no reason to be considerate of worthless. Oh, screw you, dude. That's easy to say when you're friggin' a vampire and some kind of demigod. All of them were mere sustenance for me to feed on. With a booming cackle, I summoned my knight of bloodstained roses, dooming all caught within to a painful demise. Okay, this just got really creepy, dude. Uh, whoever he's fighting is gonna have the unfortunate. Uh, they're gonna meet an unfortunate end because they're about to die pretty damn soon. The creation figment was the degree in which we created a law, the manifestation of the greatest craving burning within our hearts. Everyone had an ideal they wanted to realize, or a truth they wished to force upon others. A creation figment was a way to create a world where that became an absolute law, though there was a difference in that. Transcendences were directed inward, while hegemonies were outward. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Uh, Hadrich is a hegemony. 
whichever it was, it made the user's long cherished dream become reality. Though limited, it formed a world where you were God and your craving was a commandment. <laughs> Dude, you look... Yo, how does this man get more disgusting every damn second I see him? You wonder what kind of world I desired? Isn't it obvious? I wish for a realm of endless night. I need not the light of day for the night shall be my chief domain. What else could a vampire really want? Sure, I couldn't make it eternal, but I could unconditionally bring night upon an entire area within a 50 meter radius of me. I mean, not 50, 500, that is a totally different ball game. Oh gosh, my nose. And anyone caught inside couldn't escape until either un I until I either undid it or died. Yo. Doing this is really yo, know, this nose is really bothering me right now. It wasn't even all that costly. Well, being a hegemony that changed the world and the space for a pretty large area, couldn't stay active for long, but it had a special feature that made up for that. Dude, you don't need any special features. What you just need is to put a filter on your damn mouth and stop being so damn disgusting. Anyone consumed by my creation figment would have their life drained just by being there, which meant I'd go stronger for as long as there was someone for me to ravage. That didn't mean I could keep it up as long as I had fuel. Wait. But even so, for a hegemony type, it was pretty damn user friendly. Though, that might have had something to do with the fact it had transcendent features. So it's kind of like a two in one, dude. When the night of bloodstained roses was active, I became a pure vampire, just like the stuff of legends. I knew full well that I was born to humans. That was an objective fact. Still also had my unwavering pride as a true ancestor, and this was its physical manifestation. It was a transcendence a means of turning your very self into a different world. I was probably the only one at the obsidian table who wielded such a hybrid. Naturally, my world was strong, wicked, and beautiful. Uh, beautiful is an e a beauty is an eye to beholder, dude. And I have to say that your world is pretty damn creepy and ugly. Fusion types couldn't think straight when we went too wild, but it wasn't bad enough to be a negative. I was pretty high at that moment too. I could feel the splendor of the night through my fangs, which brought about a little side effect. What the hell, dude? Is that supposed to be Helga? Uh... Every now and oh, oops! I hit the microphone. That's that's not good. That's not good. Uh, <clears throat> Every now and then, I could hear a voice coming from the deepest parts of my consciousness. <clears throat> it was Helga, and I could feel her like she was next to me. No, maybe even closer. Uh, this isn't creepy or anything right now. <clears throat> uh, 
奪われて一つになって理解したのよ Bro I don't even Yo それはとっても幸せなことこれから先も与えてあげるし一緒にいるわ I'm struggling to play this game right now because this is just flat out disgusting, creepy. <laughs> uh, that's the first words out of your mouth. Typical. Her head was as empty as always. This was my sister and mom, and she hadn't changed a bit. It didn't even feel like we were having a conversation. This is what I meant when I said she didn't have the capacity for the slightest bit of sense. No matter what happened to her, the world was this pretty little flower garden where everything was always fine and effing dandy. <clears throat> well, now it was a rose garden, and she'd become both the princess and the gardener for all eternity. <clears throat> I mean, nobody told you to just rip her to pieces and all that other disgusting things that you did to her, dude. That's why my grumbling, I didn't truly dislike these talks. After all, the bitch was like a trophy to me. And having her around helped me remember how happy I was the moment I killed her. Yeah, so I'm just that sick of a human, well, not even a human, that sick of a... I don't know, what are you at this point? I don't even know if you're like really, really a. I guess you're a vampire, but like, you devour souls. You don't drink blood? Like, I don't even know what to call you. What are you, dude? A vampire's prey becomes a part of him, you know? Helga was the first one I took as I became certain of my true nature. So she was like a medal to me. She, I mean, had no idea. When to stop talking, but I did like it when she wreathed within me, covered completely in the reddest of blood. Alright, bro. I could only hear her when the world was drowned in grudges and bloodshed, and when I was just feeling really effing good. Because of that, hearing Helga's voice always made me feel complete. Honestly, I wouldn't mind thanking Mercurius for giving me a chance to experience something so pleasurable. I didn't mean the power itself, but the uniqueness of its manifestation. I could be proud of the fact that it belonged to me and me alone. You know what I said about creation figments needing a craving? Well, it's based on that. Even if all our powers came from the same sorcery. What you actually got ultimately depended on what you wanted. Imagine someone acting like hot, hot doo doo <laughs> just because he got a pistol. He'd be effing brain dead. A pistol was a pistol regardless of who was using it. And if he grew stronger because of it, it was all thanks to the gun alone. There was no inseparable bond between the pistol and its wielder. My Awigkate and Adonurbe, on the other hand, were like a furnace and a bunch of iron. What I made of it was up to me to decide. No one else but me could create the night of bloodstained roses, and it became what it was solely, wait, wait became what it was solely because of me. I'd say that was a pretty huge difference. If you say so.
Uh, yo. I... I don't even know what to say to this. Nani? Anyway, I was in the middle of trashing Warsaw, completely draining allies and enemies alike. Who the hell is Warsaw? The fact that Helga's voice was fading signaled the end of the night of bloodstained roses. This meant two things. First, everyone within my creation figment was dead without anyone left for me to drain. There was no point in wasting fuels, souls, just to keep this world active. Second, this was something new for me too, mind you. I became aware of the limit of souls I, as a reaper, could gather. Oh, so you have a limit. Like a daily limit or something? There was no way for me to gauge it, but it was probably in the 7,000 to 8,000 range. That was all I had, and I felt gathering more wouldn't be smart. Why? This was just an assumption, but it felt similar to overfilling a balloon. Either the Ananurbe would break or their flesh would blow up, and to us, either one of those meant death. Sure, a little bit of overeating probably wasn't that big of a deal, but the risk was still there, and taking it wasn't the smartest thing you could do. That was why my instincts told me to chill. Though I listened and stopped rampaging, I was still boiling inside. <laughs> I drained everyone around me, but the battlefield as a whole still had many more prey. It was like I'd found the perfect hunting grounds, caught all the game I could carry. I couldn't take any more despite there being tons. My only options were dropping some of what I had or ending the hunt altogether. Anyone would be pissed, especially when they were basically being told they were too weak, small, and talentless to carry anymore. It felt like someone was looking down and laughing at me, so... Really? How do you plan on doing that, sir? I'd run into a wall, but it wasn't the end. Techniques, state of mind, a deeper connection to the Ananurbe. There were many paths for me to follow from here. If the condition were right, I could easily pass this barrier. I'd felt that way back then and I still do. This might be a cliche thing to say, but the only limits were the ones you set for yourself. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Still, it was true that I couldn't do much about it at that point in time. It pissed the hell out of me. So I decided to do something uplifting, specifically going around and killing everyone in sight, you know? Things uh, very, very sick people do, even if it meant wasting their souls. I mean, I'd never seen a murder as anything ta uh, taboo anyway. Even if I could suck their blood, I could have a good time just tearing them apart. And hell, if it made me feel good, I saw no reason, no reason not to do it. Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm gonna end the video there. If you guys liked the video, make sure to slap that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next interview with Kazaklu Bay. Peace.